We're going to Tennessee. All right, yeah, we're going to Tennessee. Why are we going to Tennessee? To uh, aid in the Hurricane Helene support efforts and give out a whole buttload of boots. Yeah, so we're taking off today, October 31st, Halloween. So we've loaded up. We have like 50 grand in boots given to us, given to us, donated by Boggs for us to haul down to them. So thank you very much, Boggs. We have almost 400 pairs of Boggs boots. So we're going to hit the road, get out of here, get out of this dreary rain, and uh, we're going to see what we can do. Oh, big, awesome bridge. Check that out. It's so bumpy. I'll be slowing down. All right, well, we're rolling into Johnson City, Tennessee. It's kind of late. We're rolling in about 1130. It's been a grind. Hit a lot of traffic, but we're really excited to be here. We're going to get going early in the morning and see what we can find. All right, it's about 8.30 in the morning, 8.20. Got a little bit of sleep in. We are on our way over to, uh, where are we going? Honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> We're here in Pensacola, we just showed up. Yeah, the devastation here is un unbelievable. I mean, it's just about everything and everybody in the bottom here has been wiped out, it's bad. This here is Brian Delaney. He's head of what was called Camp Miller here. This is where everybody is staging and there's a lot of volunteer work here. I'm gonna have him tell you folks what he's seen and what's been experienced here in the greater area of Pensacola. God's doing a great work here. He absolutely is bringing volunteers from all across the country. We've had one crew from Mexico, one crew from Canada, another crew from Montana, and we're here working together with the community to help them rewrite the next chapter with hope. That's yeah. awesome. That yeah. is amazing. You know as much devastation as we've seen i keep harping on this that we hear so many stories like this you know where and what you were just talking about the folks that were taking care of their daughter their daughter has end-stage brain cancer we were able to get her communications and make sure her medications were good build that bridge back to her property and then she came back in to camp and she just wanted to give a little bit and i said no 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 but she she gave me 50 dollars. she was like she had to give it back to the community and that's how the people of the Pensacola Valley are. They're so self-sufficient. They just need support. They just need help. Yeah. And that's exactly what God's doing. He's bringing everybody around. We've had excellent partners who've helped us do that. And it's not about me. It's about we. We just do this together. We just put our hands on the plow and one day at a time, take step after step. Can you touch a little more on what you were talking about? Just the outreach of local individuals and out-of-state individuals compared to what the state and federal response has been and how you guys have kind of been able to stand on your own two feet with that additional help. If the state didn't exist here at all, if the federal government didn't exist here at all, that wouldn't have changed the response. And so we're excited to partner with whatever state and government entities, but what we know is people show up and it's not a bunch of bureaucracy, it's not a bunch of red tape, it's just people helping people, people willing to just serve. Because everybody thinks, oh, well, if FEMA would only show up, we're gonna be okay. No, yeah. Yeah. no, if people show up together and do the work together and lay their hands on it and just start to work one day at a time, something that's impossible, where the first few days here looked impossible, is made possible every single day by people bringing their hope with them. They bring their tools, they bring their heavy equipment, but most importantly, they bring their they bring the hope with them. Their willingness to sacrifice a little and make it hurt a little for themselves eases the pain of the people in this valley. Yeah, we've heard you know countless stories that just over and over about how the local residents were told, you're not gonna have power for months, you know, that's right. very, very extended periods of time. And those, those areas, they, they have power again already mm -hmm. because of selfless people that have come and put themselves, you know, second. They have put these people first and they've got power back on. They're putting communications in. They're building roads and bridges and That's all right. the stuff that was impossible that they were told by the authorities. And these people are doing it. It's amazing. The blessings come big when we all just faithfully ask and God gets the glory. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again for yeah. your time. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Glad we could do that. Thank you, man. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. We're going to hit the road and we're going to head back toward our hotel. The work's not done, so we appreciate you guys. All right, so here with me is Jason King. He's a local resident, and I'm just going to let him tell you what he's seen and what he knows about this area and what has happened here specifically. This is what's called Tootie's Creek. Um, at one point, there were three or four houses in a, a row here. The morning of the 
flood, there was a husband and wife filming, you know, water running down their driveway and stuff like that. And the husband was standing outside. He looked up that way. He heard heard something, looked, and the trees were doing something funny, he said. So then uh, he reached and pushed the stop button on his wife's camera and said, let's go in the house. And he said they went in the house and five seconds later, the, all these houses were smashed into a pile down there with logs and everything. It's just, he, uh, it knocked him out. His wife and two others didn't survive, so. This just used to be a tiny little trickle. That's it, and you can see what's happening here now. We're gonna go ahead and put the drone up and show you folks what this devastation actually looks like from that aerial view. All the way up on your porch. Well, the wave like the Wow. Porch is probably level with my head right where I'm standing here. And then pan all the way over. And look at the high watermark. Look at the trash. All the way back. Up in all the snags. And I mean, that's, that's, that's 20 feet of water. Wow. You had a front row seat, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Where did you stay? Were you you were trapped? Yeah, I stayed. You stayed. I mean, I guess you could always just yeah. go to high ground. If you had <clears> to, no, that's huh? what I told her when it when it came up on the porch. I said, "You just well to grab us a little bag of clothes and a yeah. canoe." Yeah, <laughs> I said, "Bag gives a little bit of clothes in a bag." And I said, "We'll go higher." That's all we got left to do is go higher. So while we stood there and watched houses, bodies. You know, we, we want to go down through here. How many people, uh, how many people lost their lives in this area? I know, I can't say for sure, but I know five, five. Uh, one house, most life slid in the back of the trap, trap the woman in it. Her husband got out somehow or another and he survived, but she, I think it took them about four days to get her out of the house. Yeah, so this... Where they had the one line going on yeah, the... Yes, sir. That's where... The plastics plant right there. Yeah, yeah, that's where most of the bodies around here ended up at. Oh, my gosh. There's still a lot. I had no idea that this drainage ended up going that way. Yeah. Like, after you go over all those mountains, it yeah. seems like we're on opposite so, sides yeah. of the watershed. I raised a two-acre garden out there this year, this summer. Wow. So you had a lot of stuff on this side of the side. Oh yeah, I lost a fifth wheel camp, a small enclosed trailer, another bigger small uh, enclosed trailer, two fifth wheel utility trailers, another small, small utility trailer in an F-250. So is there any kind of insurance? Is there any kind of aid that's coming? Is there well, any they, state they, assistance, federal, that you guys are seeing? Well, FEMA's in here, I think. I've talked to them a few times, but I've not heard nothing. See some of the bigger, I think there might be one, one and a half left of concrete bridges. It washed most of them out across the river that people live in across the river. I lived here, well, my parents lived here, and I did too. In 1977, we had a pretty good flood. This, this ain't even going to touch. That's what I heard. I've heard from some locals that the 77 flood was bad, but it was like 10 inches, and there's areas here that got 30 inches. Yeah, no, this, this right here, it's, I've never seen nothing. I've lived here all my life like this. But everybody's been good to, good to us here anyway. You know, they people stop, bring stuff. People on up the road need to get worse than we do now. Wow, okay. Well, that's the direction we're heading. I mean, we don't have much. We just got boots, but yeah. we're gonna 
see if we can do more. You know, the Are power you? of social media is, is amazing these days. I mean, that's the only thing that we really have. Yeah. We have a following on, on a bunch of different social media platforms like YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. And uh, again, we're just trying to shed some light on what's happening here. So yeah. maybe some people want to take and donate and get some more funds coming this way for you folks that lost so much. Yeah. If we can raise enough funds, you know, maybe someone has lost a home. We can build them something. Maybe we can build them a cabin or some sort of temporary lodging. I don't know that we have deep enough pockets or we'll be able to raise enough to build them a whole new home, but maybe we can do something. Yeah. Talk that much of us, you know, to come. Well, boy, if I lost everything, I'd want someone to come help me. Yeah. Well, let's get you your boots here. You said you were a 13 or 14? 13. They run a little bit big. That's a so I'd say, yeah, I'd say that'd, be, that'd be great. 13 um, clod hoppers right there. That's right. what I wear. <laughs> I've got a pretty good foundation on me. Yes, sir. Sorry for your loss, uh, man. Everybody's in the same boat up to here. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of people I affected. Mean, well, you can't do nothing but kind of giggle at it and go on, you know. And loss is a loss. Well, that's a pretty good attitude. Yeah, it's, we all in the same boat. It's lost, you know. But things can be bought back, I guess. Yeah, you still got your life, right? Yeah. Got your life, got your wife. Yeah, I ain't got a roof over my head still, so I'm pretty thankful for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey. Blessings. Hey. Our blessings all. All right. Well, no worries. We're going to head up on the river and see if we can find some more folk. Right. They all put, they put all that back in. Funneled the river back up. And just stop right here if you folks need some boots. Yes, ma'am. All right. This one here? Yep. All right. What size are you, lady? Oh, like a seven ish. Sir, thank you very much. Very humbling. Yes. Uh, what was your name? Jason. Jason. West White. Pleasure to meet you, sir. If you need a place to stay, we're good. God give us a place to house people, so. Unbelievable. Yeah. Really, we're yeah. we're here trying to help, and you're telling you're you're offering help. Well, that's oh. amazing. That's what we're supposed well, to do. I know it seems backward, but thank you. Well, very much. Wes, this is Daniel. 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 Hey, sir. hey, hey pleasure to meet you. you. Great. You need a pair of boots. I'm good. You I'm sure. Volunteering as well, so. That's all right. Yes, we're I'm we're trying to bless anybody who needs boots. I that. So these people here need a far worse. Than okay. Them, so. Very good. Thank y'all for coming. I'm Wes. Jerry. Jerry. Good to meet you, Jerry. Good to meet you, Wes. It's my father. All right, you need a pair of boots, Jerry? I could use a pair. Let's do that. Size 11. You feel free to try them on in case they don't fit. Does fit all right? Okay. Got another taker. I'm gonna get to work. Hey, thank, thank you. you, sir. What kind of help have you guys received? Well, who's been helping? Who have you seen? The Samaritan's Purse is absolutely, they're just angels. They're okay. The workers sent straight from heaven. Remembering us, praying for us, all that. That's that, all, that's that all for good sure. things. Yeah, we will do that. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, well, hey, fellas. Thank you, sir. We can yeah, take our own you. trash. <laughs> it no, came we, out of our trip. Oh, did it? You're going to burn it? Yes, Cindy. She'll okay, so thanks for uh, the tour. Well, thank thanks. you. You guys. Hopefully we stay in contact. All right, so we were in Elizabethton and we couldn't really find anything there. So I saw an officer parked on the side of the road. I went and talked to him and he advised us to go up here to Roan Mountain. So we're going to head to the Roan Mountain First Baptist Church and see if anybody's around. And we're here at the First Baptist Church. Looks like they got a little donation center. Brought down. This is just one of the two trailers we hauled down. Oh, wow. It's full okay. of boots. All right, the last box of shoes. I'll get the door for you, buddy. Oh, thank you. There you go. Good Way job, buddy. Boots. Way to do it. Way to do the thing. 400 boots later. <laughs> yeah, 400 boots, roughly. All into the hands of people who need them. Oh, yeah. All right, we're hooked up. Ready to rock and roll? 
All right. home. We're going to fuel up at the station down here and hit the road. Action. I'm tired. <laughs> we've been driving all day. And we've been driving here for the last couple hours through a lot of rain. So, like, a lot of it. Yeah, there's a lot. But, boy, it feels good to be home. We're just about five minutes from the ranch. So, it's a good trip. Met a lot of awesome people. A lot of stories. A lot of heartbreak. A lot of hope. So, we're going to see what we can do. We'd love to go back and help some folks out. We'll see where God leads us. We'll leave it in his hands. We'll go with that. But it's been a great experience for the boys to really see something like that. Now it helps you change. It it really does change your perspective. Um, just about you know what's important in life. What you might think is you know important. Oh, I don't have enough money for this, or I don't have this new thing I want. Well, none of that really matters. You know, you start seeing that kind of disruption. That's something. I don't know. Anyway, if you stuck with us this far, we sure appreciate you. We will be catching you soon. You'll see us on the ranch. Maybe you'll see us over in Tennessee or North Carolina again. We appreciate you guys. Have a good one.